Welcome back to the new nightmare. We're back in Obed's office. You might remember what happened last time. What happened last time uh, is I... I opened that, and there was nothing in it, and then I was killed by dogs. So we're not opening that. I should mention that I uh, replayed from the last save. Uh, did a little better in terms of conserving ammo. I did use all of my grenades on the zombies, which are extremely tanky. But the other, the shotgun, I still have a fair amount of ammo in that, so that should be fine. All right, we examine this room. Let's examine it again and, you know, take what we can take. Yeah. Yeah. Box of magnesium bullets. Just to make sure, let's get the documentation. We already read this. I don't know if there's a reason to pick it up again, but, you know, we just want to make sure that we... That the game doesn't think we missed something. Right, here's this. We also read this one. Alright, so. What are we doing in this room? Okay, so, I, like I said, I played back up to here so I could save it, but I also played a little bit further, so we would have some idea on what to do. Oh, we didn't look at this one. Uh, or did, was this, was a copy of this in Lucy's room? I think this article was in, was in Lucy's room. He's getting, yeah, big, fi big finances for his, uh, his research. The Epcanist conceived a highly dis yeah we already read this at the beginning of the game all right so uh joseph edenshaw who uh, apparently is our ally tells us that we should examine this office but what is it that we need to find well i was rubbing myself against you know the walls and such the mirror seems to be cracked What do we do with that? We can't interact with it. Do we have any tools? Could perhaps we use an Allen wrench? We cannot. Perhaps we could use an Allen gun? Yeah, actually, yes. Actually, yeah, yes. And then, like, monsters appear. But then they disappear? Let's turn the lights back on. I don't know, it's like, is that like a jump scare? Does that count as a jump scare? I'm not sure. Anyway, there's something in here. Their words are like spears, like lightning, bringing great rolls of thunder. They emanate from the mouths of the gods themselves. You, witch doctor who read them, beware. The danger they conceal is far greater than the power you desire. The terrible anger of the great Hecatonchitis will rain down on any usurper. Know this, witch doctor, that this language was passed down by your father, from your father's father, and beyond. It is your flesh, it is your blood, your duty is to serve the humankind, and its battle against the shadows of the night. The ritual to open the gate can only be accomplished during the 18th cycle of the moon. Witch Doctor, you will need to invoke the seven names of the seven gods of light. Hecatonchiris, Gilgamesh, Ophanos, Anticoth, Heliopaner, Melacanth, Hemicles. Then observe the flight of the children of the sky. If their wings beat the air, renounce the ritual, for only great sorrow shall come of it. If they hold their wings in the currents, however, prepare yourself for the longest night of your life. Pure and fearless of spirit, you must stand before the gate. Here invoke the gods of light one last time, and then kneel down. 
proclaim clearly these sacred words. Olar hekbati anosirio bonanza terna sange hiliazer hekiton kairis. And prepared thyself for the final con combat. All right, we found this book. I should see Lucy. For some reason, we decide we need to see Lucy. So I guess this is what we needed to find in here. Let's go see Lucy. Which isn't going to take long, because for some reason, after we decide that, we go through this door. And now we're in Lucy. That's not where the door leads. It just warped us back to Lucy's room. Which, I mean, convenient. We don't have to walk back there. Hey, Lucy, I read a strange book. So, have you seen Obed? Unfortunately, I think so. I don't know what's going on. Does Obed have enemies? What has he done that everyone hates him so? And why didn't you tell me that you had another son? Alan, that horrid beast is my son no longer. We have very little hope left. Our family bears a dark secret, young lady, and Alan is the cause of it. Obed gave me this here. I take a glass prism. I know too well what it is. Oh, oh poor Howard. What have I done to deserve this hell? You must ask yourself the very same question, young lady. You did not end up here by chance. If the Lord allows you to escape, shed some light on your own life. You were born out of a misdeed and you are paying for that sin. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know better than I do. Enough, leave me now. I'm weary and wish to sleep. Besides, all in all, I find you very unpleasant. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the conversations with Lucy have been the highlight of the game. No, we can't just talk to her again. <laughs> I wonder if she would like Carnby any better. Well, she did give us something. An eight-sided crystal prism. It's the only thing we have. All right, well... I found where we use that. Uh, can you think of where we use it? There's... I mean, we've been in a bunch of rooms. Can you think of any... Anything that we've seen that maybe we weren't able to use the first time, and maybe we could use this now? I mean, honestly, I kind of feel like this is just a rub-everything-on-everything everything kind of deal. Remember this one? It's a strange machine equipped with a lens. It looks like a projector. Oh wait, didn't mean to do- Oh, there's a conversation. This strange contraption in Alan's office. Jeremy Morton's kinetoscope? Yes, I guess so. I have a crystal, but nothing's happening. You need to add a light source. A light source? Yes, it's some kind of a projector. You need a light bulb. You know, you could just tell me up front I have to put my flashlight to it instead of inventing riddles. I swear I didn't even think of that solution. Oh, they just tell you if you use the radio. I figured that out on my own. You could just use the radio in certain locations, then they tell you the solutions to the puzzles? This is game-breaking tech here. I didn't actually even mean to use the radio there. Carnby's just like, yeah, I've done these kind of puzzles before. Alright, well... We use the glass prism here. 
I th I was quite proud of myself for figuring this out because like it's not working right and I'm thinking well okay what do I need it's a projector a projector needs a light bulb to project what if I use my flashlight as the light source I should t uh, I should turn out my light hold on and I was quite proud of myself for figuring that out, but no, the game tells you it if you just use the radio. There it is. Movie time. Why did you try and stop me in my path, Father? You mustn't struggle against your fate. But you won't have died in vain. Your body is about to experience a new birth. The darkness blending into your blood will make you a stronger being. You will be faster. You will be a complete being. Oh, marvelously complete. First injection. Farewell, Father. Second injection. Welcome, new man. Is it supposed to sound like that? I take an engraved cube. Engraved metal cube. It's an engraved library 3D map. Okay, so this is what I played up to. Don't know what we're doing after this. <clears throat> Alright, so... Earlier, we did see a journal entry... ...talking about uh, my something like my father is my son. So I guess what that is. Alan did experiments on his dad. And, like, killed him and then resurrected him as a monster. Um, and it, I guess it turns out that Alan and Obed are brothers. Obed is having second thoughts about this whole thing. And Alan is, is like, raring to go. He wants to do all kinds of monsters. He wants immortality. And I guess that I guess we're stop I guess we're trying to stop him. I guess that's what's going on. All right, I got a cube. What do I do with this cube? I guess we should go to the to the library. Is there a light switch in here? Well, not right here, anyway. There's one. Please hit it. No? It's a little... touchy. About where... Uh, finicky about where you're standing when you do this. Oh wait, the light was on. Okay. Well, the light's on down here, not at the entrance to the hallway. There isn't a light switch down here? It doesn't seem like it. I think this way's a dead end, isn't it? And that's a door. We not been in here? Maybe not. Please take that. It's glowing. We can see it's glowing. Oh, oh there we go. Terrible loneliness you feel faced with the unknown, face to face with something words can't describe. In the course of a life that has been too too long, I have encountered the creatures of the night.
I can help you overcome them, master them, and make them your slaves, your servants. You will find supreme power. The power of the absolute that knows no bounds for all eternity. You will find that wielding, wielding it brings intense pleasure. My name is Judas Deserto, and you're already getting to know me better. I guess I was supposed to find this a while back. We already kind of dealt with him. In exchange for this power that already I feel surging through your veins, I ask you one small favor, a simple, a small request with which you will not fail to comply once the time is right. All I require is that you send me the small promissory night note enclosed sign with your blood. My name is Judas Deserto, and now you know who I am. Well, who was this addressed to? Was it addressed to Alan? Did Alan send the uh, promissory note? Eden Shaw and I. Yeah, that's Eden Shaw. Eden Shaw was like a real father for us. He was Grandpa Jeremy's best and only friend. I always felt that there was a strong bond between us, like we shared a secret, or the responsibility for a terrible mistake. I remember when we were kids, and we would always get Alan and me mixed up. Okay, so this is Obed. Grandpa Jeremy in the Fort Laboratory. Jeremy would spend days and nights on end in this workshop. It was here, too, that I started my own scientific career. Eden Shaw had his bedroom just next door, as if my grandfather couldn't go around, couldn't go without having him around. There, yep, there's everyone. Picture taken during our, to our visit to the Anthropology Museum in Boston. My grandfather organized a visit for my 15th birthday. That visit determined my choice of profession. I remember how surprised I was at just how much Eden Shaw knew in Grandpa Jeremy's workshop. My grandfather's workshop was like Alibaba's cave, but I always sensed that behind his carefree appearance, the research he carried out had very far-reaching consequences. Eden Shaw in the garden of the estate. Eden Shaw said little about his Native American origins, which gave him a certain mystery and certain aura. I'm still convinced that he knows much more than he lets on. July 13th, 1991. Alan has done something... Terrible. Howard, our father. We are going straight to hell. Okay, so we saw the video of uh, what he did to dad. I mean, we don't know what the results were. We don't actually know what happened to dad as a result of the experiment. Maybe we'll find out. Napoleon, obviously, the man who discovered the secrets of Egyptian hieroglyphics. Oh, first aid kits. Okay, there was some lore and some first aid kits here. But what we actually need is, I suppose, to go to the library. Should probably use a first aid kit. I have a few. Now, I guess this is not a library. There's no books. And the rooms are not... They're not labeled on the map. So we have to think about... Have we seen a room that looks like it could be a library? One thing that is in this room is another mirror, but uh, that mirror has something missing from it, so I don't think we're supposed to shoot it. Okay, that goes back here. This is Obed's office. Mm, is that guy really going to respond every time I leave the room? Kind of looking like it. That's sealed up. Right, this mirror right here. One of the mirror's ornaments is missing. Yeah. 
And there are dudes here too. Zombies. We don't want to deal with the zombies. Looks like we're in an attic. Have we been here before? I'm not sure. Not nothing lying around, I guess. We've been in this room. No light switch in here, I don't think. So here we're in... Uh, here's, here's where he first talked to Dercerto. He was in that mirror. Okay, yeah, we're in the original part of the house now, where we entered. That doesn't really help us. The issue is that we need... Oh, right, I broke the... That door doesn't work anymore. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Why make it so that that door just doesn't work? Right, there's now a hole there. Well, I mean, they. I guess you can't use that door, but they did break a hole in the wall. So it does let us go back here. Lucy, I got a weird cube. I don't suppose you know anything about it? No, it doesn't seem so. Alright, well, like I said, we have to find a library. Or maybe? We got a cube about a library map. But is that actually where, where we need to go? Or where do we need to go? Is not... It's a little unclear at the moment. We can go down to the bottom floor. Actually, we could also check our notebook, see if that got updated. And see Aline's thoughts. Managed to view the content of the crystal prism. Alan killed Howard, his own father. He used his dead body to run a gruesome experience. He pretends he wants to create a new man. Talking about Eden Shaw. All right, no indication here uh, as to what we should be doing next. Oh, this is... We haven't been in here, have we? No, this, this was locked last time we were here. I'm quite sure we never went in this room. Okay. We found the library, anyway. Let's read some documents. June 1949. I am a Morton. I realize that today. I have tried for so long to escape my destiny, but my willpower was probably not strong enough. My fascination for the world of darkness has vanquished me. But I chose to resist cooperation, a choice my father never had because of that demon, Deserto. For I understand, early on, that only light can vanquish darkness. 
the magnesium bullets that were made in Italy have a remarkable effect on the smaller creatures, but they have proved inadequate to deal with the stronger monsters dwelling deep in the entrails of the night. The work of the French scientist de Bruges has greatly inspired my research. The properties of light he discovered and its undulating nature are remarkable. It is thus possible to concentrate and amplify it, to rupture its movement in phase, and thus transform it into a terrible destructive energy. The information I possess about the molecular structure of the shadows of the night is fragmentary, but my study of them has produced conclusive results that their capacities for absorption of light energy are limited. Photoelectric energy at certain high levels destabilizes its chemical structure. The, molecule, the molecules break down and the entire macro system implodes. If I could build a weapon able to concentrate light energy by factors of up to 100, or even 1,000, then, if I had the technology, if there weren't limits, God, if only someone could help me. When Edenshaw defeated Deserto, that malevolent being who led our family down the path to dishonor, I knew that my Indian friend had been sent to me by the gods. As a child, I saw him complete the incantation at the Circle of Stones, facing in the direction of the conjunction. It's red. Maybe we should remember that bit? Deserto, who knew their power, employed his magical powers to dissimulate some of the statues from the eyes of man. January 13th, 1953. This date will remain engraved in my memory forever. My grandchildren were born today. God alone knows what they will make of their lives. Howard wants to get them away from Shadow Island. I understand his reasons. But I fear that destiny will prove a f will prove stronger than a poor father's desire. October 14th, 1966. My research advances in leaps and bounds. Time is of the essence. I feel things staring down below, like they know that a date with destiny is nigh. Their forays into our world of light are becoming increasingly frequent. With every new day, my study of the creatures of darkness greets me with new surprises. It seems that they all possess the same genetic heritage. The expression, however, is unsuitable. The entities are more closely related to minerals than organic life, but I find none better. It is though they have all been cloned from the same root matter. December 5th, 1969. I have finally managed to strengthen the residence power of the crystals. Now only matter stands in my way. I tested the first version of the photoelectric pulsar, and it literally fell to pieces in my hands. I fear I must brace myself for long months of adjustment and careful tuning. Alan continues to show remarkable intuition. His mind seems to be perfectly in tune with the creatures of the night. He even claims that they obey his commands. However, I am unhappy with the direction his research is taking. May 31st, 1973. My strength is abandoning, abandoning me. Sharp pains shoot through my body like arrows. I still have so much left to do. I now know that Alan belongs to another world entirely. For the first time ever, he told me about his real plans. He wants to fuse light and dark, to restore their original unity, to reunify them, so defying their separation. I think he has been waiting for the moment when I am too weak and old to oppose him. God alone knows what he might do. For the first time in my life, last night, I prayed. Alright, I guess that's from Joseph, the grandfather. I like how, like, a couple pages in this are him talking about, I'm building this badass light gun. My light gun is great. Hopefully it works to defeat the creatures of darkness. Um, there's also the text in red, talking about facing a certain direction. Oh, hold on, the radio? Yes, Aline. I'm in the library. I'm sure it didn't reveal all its secrets, but... That's for sure. You'll never have enough time to read all the books in there. That's not what I meant. I recovered some sort of engraved metal cube. There might be a link. Well, then trust your intuition. Maybe there's a link between the cube and the library. But actually, I wanted to look at that again. <clears throat> Complete incantation at Circle of Stones, facing the direction of the conjunction. Okay, maybe we should remember that.
statue is much older than everything else. How can we tell? Richard Morton back... Oh, 49. Richard Morton back from an exploration in front of one of his ships. <sighs> Alright. Get a snack, I guess. The history of the famous Boston dynasty is a tale full of unexplained events, surprises, and troubles. Some will claim my only goal in telling it is to damage the reputation of one of the most legendary fortunes of Massachusetts. I would like to say in my defense that I am simply doing my duty as a historian. My account is based on reliable sources and interviews with witnesses who, though they may be evasive, are no less worthy of our interest. If I echo certain rumors, it's in the belief that they are too are constitutive of the Morton family history. Morton Oil Company, Rock Oil. Contract for the exploitation of natural resources in Puebla, Venezuela, signed by a representative of the Venezuela Venezuelan government and by Richard Morton. The Morton family roots in America go back to the time of the great demographic changes during the decades following the founding of the USA. Although it's impossible to reconstruct the family history further back than the beginning of the 19th century, it appears that the family originated from the small town of Whitechapel in Sussex, England. It was Robert Morton, a linen merchant, who led his family to the American continent. In 1823, he built his first paper factory on the heights of Beacon Hill. The success of Morton Papers was dazzling. It was Richard Morton, though, his older brother, who founded the real Morton Empire by... Creating the Morton Oil Company on March 23rd, 1889, at the age of 37. There, there's some numbers in there. Hold on. Maybe I should write that down. I'm going to write down... March... 23rd... 1889... Age 37. And we'll see if that comes up as we go. The Iceman. The Morton family's history of secrecy started with the discovery of a man in the ice during his company's prospecting expeditions in Greenland between 1891 and 93. Richard Morton, the influential public figure, became increasingly reclusive. Same. Abandoning the powerful Boston society circles he frequented. To launch himself into daring expeditions that led him back time after time to the site of his first macabre discovery. Deserto is in the background. Yeah? I mean, if you say so. Honestly, I didn't really get a good look at the guy's face. To assist in his missions, which sometimes ended in human and financial disaster, he called upon Swedish and Norwegian sailors and mercenaries, among who was a certain Judas Deserto. Deserto was a risk taker, a warrior, and a clairvoyant, interested in the arts of black magic. He was a suspicious character who seemed to have great influence over Richard Morton. The exact cause of this terrible accident was never uncovered. Against expectations, the family business was flourishing. The Morton Oil Company won over market after market in Venezuela, in Indonesia, and in the North Sea. Its competitors, meanwhile, were struck by a string of surprising... misfortunes. Their key negotiators had accidents, their directors developed mental health problems, and their lawyers would cave in suddenly, agreeing to disadvantages, dis disadvantageous settlements. No public or private investigation managed to pin a criminal charge on the Morton Group. The family's fortune was known to be huge, however, no one knew how huge. Gibson around 1900. Samuel Gibson entered into Richard Morton's service on June 20th, 1899. This brilliant student had a knack for deciphering ancient languages. It had turned out that Morton had entrusted him with the translation of inscriptions on tablets found near the famous Iceman. Gibson's work led Richard Morton to Shadow Island. Offshore view of Shadow Island. The fort that overlooks the island's bleak moors had been abandoned for a good 20 or so years. Soldiers stationed there had experienced hallucinations or suffered sudden bouts of sheer madness. Others simply disappeared without trace. 
I should also mention a strange legend that claims the chapel, situated near the fort, had been the site of strange rituals during the 17th century, during which human sacrifices might have taken place. The state of Massachusetts needed no convincing when Richard Morton offered to buy Shadow Island, which he did for a nominal sum. It seems that, to start with, Richard Morton wanted to make the fort his home. He spent a real fortune and superhuman effort on this task before abandoning the idea. He elected uh, instead to build a strange manor on the south side of the island. His decision to buy Shadow Island and live there was because engravings on the stone tablets were similar to those found in the island's deepest underground passageways. Letter from Gibson to his fiancée, dated October 14th, 1902. We can't... can't read it? As work on translation of the engravings advanced, relations between Morton and Gibson deteriorated. The student relished the romanticism of his work, whereas Morton seemed devoured by a destructive passion. What's more, Gibson's discoveries seemed to terrify him. He confided his worries and fears in a long letter addressed to his young fiancée, who had stayed on the mainland. This was the last that was heard of him. Gibson's mother later received this terse message. Your son has disappeared. His body has not been found. My condolences. Signed Richard Morton. Search warrant for unknown girl. The peak of Richard Morton's disturbing activity coincided with the wa a wave of disappearances among the young girls of Boston's poor neighborhoods. This is the most disturbing episode of his life. It is my definite belief that, driven by the evil Deserto, the founder of the Morton dynasty was practicing black magic rituals involving the sacrifice of innocent souls. Without doubt, in the very chapel, sacrifices had taken place three centuries earlier. To what end, I do not know. The first disappearances started in October slash November 1903. They continue with the frightening regularity of one a month, increasing during periods of equinox until Richard Morton died on April 13th, 1905. On this date, the disappearances mysteriously stopped. Archibald Morton as a child. In 1874, Archibald Morton was born, the only child of Richard Morton, Susan Chalmers, the youngest daughter of Lord Chalmers. All right, uh, hold on, it's, it's red. Let me say 1874, Archibald. Morton, Richard, and Susan. I don't know what information I might need if I need it. The youngest daughter of Lord Chalmers, a ruined aristocrat and opium addict. While the Morton Oil Company's business prospered, Archibald devoted his youth to the study of the polar circles. Like his father, he mounted many expeditions. Like his father, he also developed a fascination for Shadow Island and its strange secrets. Young Polynesian men and women in the hold of a ship. It has slowly emerged that n large numbers it has slowly emerged that large numbers young men and women were uprooted from their distant homelands and taken to the island from as early as the end of 1905. Archibald was, in this matter, more discreet than his father. Evidence of this is found not only in the accounts of some sailors, but also in the written confessions of a slave trader, Thomas Plunkett in which Deserto's name is cited several times. It seems, however, that no trace of these unfortunate men and women have ever been found on this island. Maybe maybe, maybe we've been fighting them. Maybe they were turned into, into monsters. Archibald Morton and Jennifer Pratchett. In 1897, Archibald Morton married his first wife, Jennifer Pritchett, a pastor's daughter and a renowned organist. She was a devout Christian and wrote long letters to her father, recounting her disgust for her husband and her despair. The pastor, however, had disappeared the day after the marriage. The undelivered letters were kept in the postal archives, where I discovered them still sealed. Archibald treated her with uncommon cruelty. She nevertheless gave birth to his son in 1899. All right. Um... 
1899. Archibald and Jennifer's son. I guess we're... I guess we're, we ha I guess a puzzle is going to involve a family tree. Jeremy Morton as a child. Jeremy was of a weak and delicate nature, but early in life he already showed signs of exceptional intelligence. He too was haunted by the secrets of Shadow Island, but his general approach was more scientific. Jeremy Morton was an inventor. The breadth and originality of his inventions, which he had never even bothered to patent, is highly impressive. He intended congresses and addressed conferences. In 1922, he struck up a lasting friendship with one of the last descendants of the Epcanis tribe, Joseph Edenshaw. The Native Americans settled on Shadow Island in 1924. Invoice from the Nobel Company, addressed to Jeremy Morton. There it is. Here's an invoice. Explosives, phosphorus, magnesium. It appears that Jeremy Morton collected a considerable arsenal of weaponry. In less than three years, he ordered over 200 pounds of explosives from the Nobel Company in Boston, along with large quantities of phosphorus and magnesium. Jeremy Morton and Joseph Edenshaw. The last 10 years of Jeremy Morton's life were the most secretive and mysterious. In his youth and middle age, the inventor genius hobnobbed with the cream of society. He spent his old age, however, as a recluse on the island. Some accounts of this period make the blood run cold. One example is the marriage of his son, Howard, born in 1931, to Lucy Dogan. All right, um... 1931... We have, uh... Jeremy... And Lucy's son... for which he staged a reception on the island. Relations, and members from a distant branch of the family, were present. The party was disrupted by drama when the horrifically mutilated body of one of the guests was discovered in the park adjacent to the manor. Lucy's brother, Michael Dogan, claims to have seen a terrifying lizard-like creature with tentacles armed with enormous fangs. The horribly mutilated body of one of the guests. There is no doubt in my mind that the members of the Morton family, Jeremy being no exception, undertook dangerous and frightful experiments on the corpses discovered by Richard and his successors. Experiments that interfere with nature's own course, resurrections from the dead, crossbreeding, genetic manipulation. All right, here's the family tree. Howard Morton, Lucy Dogan. And then from there, we have... Let's say Jeremy Morton unknown. Let me go back for a second. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wrote that down wrong. It's actually. So, Howard. See, 1931 was the birth of Howard, who was the son of, uh, of Jeremy. Okay, so Howard Morton and Lucy Dogan, then Jeremy Morton and Unknown, then Archibald Morton. Actually, we're going, sorry, start from the bottom. Richard Morton, Susan Chalmers, then Archibald Morton and Jennifer Pritchett, then Jeremy Morton and Unknown, and Howard Morton and Lucy Dogan. All right, I'm just gonna. I don't know yet which, what information exactly we're gonna need. But, I mean, it looks like it wants to know about the, uh, the birth dates of the Mortons. Nineteen thirty-one, okay. I'm sure there's gonna be a puzzle. But we haven't seen it yet. Is that a thing? Yeah, it is. Box of grenades. Here we go. 
I wonder if that bit about talking about how they they bought a whole bunch of explosives and phosphorus and magnesium is that an explanation for why there's so much like weird ammunition weird light based ammunition on the island is that something we can read it doesn't seem like I can get around to it. Can I walk through that? No, I guess not. Right, let's head down here. Anything here? Doesn't seem like it. If I examine all the walls, will I eventually find a, something that says that there's a mechanism? And I have to get the false book. Put it in to open the secret door. thing right there. It doesn't seem like I can interact with it. Fortunately, someone left the secret door open. I guess I don't have to open it myself. Better not remove that. There might be a painting behind it that will throw hatchets at me. There is a light switch there. Mm -hmm. Anything you want me to do with this? I mean, I guess there's one missing. But I have not seen one of those. Cartridges. Alright, just remember if we find one of those things that they need one in here. Don't seem to be able to do anything else. Upstairs we go. Out the broken window? Maybe, but first let's look around. Well, I'm in the library. I haven't found a way to use this cube. Don't know what the purpose of the cube is as of yet. That's the end of that, I guess. Oh, hold on. What are we looking at here? Y yeah? We could look down. This is what we see. <clears throat> Do we need to move something? Can we move something? Look at our cube. Okay, I, go I guess those are the four shelves, maybe? If we look down, like, there are four on the left side. There's four bookshelves in the hexagon. Carnby, got any advice? No, I guess not. Alright, so if we look at it like this... There are numbers, <clears throat> 1991, 
There's also a sparkle in one of them. Is that a clue that I should look there? Well, I guess we could go down and, and look at it. There's also the window, but uh, let me go downstairs and see if there is something. And it looks like that this is a thing here. Like, the thing I'm, I'm looking at right now, it looks like there's buttons on it. But, yeah, nothing's happening. Okay, so if I'm looking at this, I guess the sparkle would be here. Yes, it is. Odd books. All right, what year does it want? We could, I have a few years here. I have 1889. I have... I have 1874. I have 1931. I have 1952. And on the cube, it has, what, 1991? Okay, 1991. Okay, there is a secret door. Very small secret room. What do we have? Oh, I got a tablet. First aid kit. Charm of saving. A whole bunch of things. Yeah, I want to pull a lever. I will always pull a lever. Is that good? Probably not good. Oh, he's fast. Uh. Let's see what he can do. Yes, absolutely. All right, we made it. I mean, maybe I have to kill him. I don't, I mean, I don't know for sure if I can. I might just end up wasting ammo with that. But it lets us leave. That has to mean something.
No, we can't. I guess we can't shimmy. I was thinking maybe we could shimmy across that. We, it does not let us shimmy. Takes us back out here. Box of grenades. We like we like to see that. Speaking of which, uh, what's my grenade situation? I got quite a few. I got fifty. There's a lot of grenades in those boxes. Is there anything on this window? I don't see anything on that window. It looks like there's like a clamp or like a hook, but I'm not... It doesn't let me interact with it. Alright, what I'm gonna do... I'm gonna use a save game. You might notice we don't have many of those. But, you know, we've been going for almost an hour, and, you know, we've made some progress, so it's probably okay to, to use that. And, uh, I'm gonna equip this grenade launcher. Or maybe it's not equipped. Well, it says it's equipped. There we go. And, uh, we're, we're gonna just unload grenades into the sky and see how it goes. Ow. Okay, there we go. Turns out it went quite well. What is here? I take a half medallion. Bronze medallion representing a half sun. Um, oh, maybe... This is kind of the shape of the missing thing in the mirror. But we only have half of it. Do we need the whole thing? I don't know if there's anything else around, so maybe the only thing we could try to do is to go back to um, try to use that in the mirror. Do we have anything new in our notebook? Carnby has spotted Obed in the old fort overlooking the island. Must go there at once. Did Carnby mention that? I don't remember him hearing him say that. Carnby, did you mention that? Carnby? This must mean something to Lucy Morton. Oh, are we going back to talk to Lucy? Okay, I'm fine with that. I like Lucy. Hey, Lucy, what do you think of this thing I found? I killed this weird thing in the library. To get this. I need you one last time. I knew you would be back. Were you able to speak with Obed? Not yet, but I know now that he's alive for sure. I've got to tell you, 
Your sons are monsters. Oh no. The true monster is this island. You must know, young lady. Tonight is a special night. As for me, I shall let myself be carried away. I shall let myself slip away. I, I've had enough and wish to rest now. Save your soul. I'm gonna try and save my body first. But I can't find a way out of this place. I only have one half of the medallion. I know not how you came about it, and do not wish to know. Here's the other half. Oh, she just had it. May I ask you one last thing? Go ahead. Your son, Obed. Did he ever talk to you about... I mean, did he ever tell you he had a child? A daughter? Obed, a child? But with, with whom? Obed was never interested in anything apart from his accursed Indians. Obed burnt his life away in the flames of a pernicious passion. And yet, how could it have been otherwise? But why such a question? For no reason. No reason at all. Don't worry. I'll bring him back to you. Don't worry. No, you shall do no such thing. I am to die, and you are to live. Such are our fates, opposite, yet intertwined. Now go in peace. I am about to enter the realm of darkness, where Howard will come and meet me as soon as you set him free. Oh, thank you, young lady. Oddly, that's how I like to say goodbye to people, too. You know, I'm just, I, I might just be stopping off to, to get some fast food, and when they gave me their give me the food, I'll mention to them, our fates are intertwined, you and I. Bound, and yet opposite. I now take my leave into the world of darkness. It's memorable, if nothing else. Alright, um... Carnby? Carnby, I can't see how to get out of here. Out of where? This manor, of course. I came in through a secret passageway that opened into the lobby. Carnby, how will I ever thank you? <laughs> no need to exaggerate. Once we're out of here, you'll forget I even exist. Please, Carnby, cut out the false modesty. I like how there's no indication at all whether there's going to be a conversation when I use that. We've probably missed a whole bunch of conversations. Bronze Sun, made from two medallions. Alright, well this looks like... Oh. He's okay, he's fine. Oh, that's the dad, isn't it? That's, uh... That's Howard, right? Like we didn't. We knew that Alan was. Alan did some sort of horrific experiment. To him, we saw it in the video. I guess that must be him. Go in, please. It's a little too finicky on where it wants you to be to interact with something. I feel. Let's use a second one. Get us to blue. Alright. So, does it go... It looks like it goes there. It sure does.
Casket is empty. For now. Is that a light switch? Yeah, maybe not. Got a door. Ladder going up. Drawer's empty. Why is it? Why do we get like a close up of right here? Formalin residue. Crate sent to a Jay Morton from the Nobel Company. Oh, this is the explosives. Yeah, crates of old of old explosives here. We got stairs going down. Uh, which way do we want to go? Well, let's try going through the door. Okay, sealed up. That makes that easy. All right, let's try going down. I would like uh. No? Well... I guess not? I don't- I'm not sure- <laughs> Well, you're, you're seeing as, as well as I can. It doesn't seem like I can actually go down there. Alright, let's try going up. I do want to climb the ladder. Oh, that's what that's for. I picked up that Allen wrench a while back and I was wondering what we when we were going to use that. And if we missed picking that up, that would be weird. Like I would I don't think I'd know what to do if I tried to go up that and said no, it's locked. Sorry. I know you have a statue. There are still six missing. I don't understand why you never did something before. You could have prevented this whole nightmare. I am but a man. You have no idea what this ritual is for me. But time is running short. I know Alan is getting ready to open the gate, and that will unleash a true flood. You know I want to help. If I'm going to die, let's at least make it worthwhile. So. Give me a hint before you vanish again. Go to the fort. That is the Morton's true place. That is where you shall unveil the secrets of the island. Now to slowly mosey away. Carnby. Carnby? No, no Carnby. We can go this way. Is there anything else back there? Yeah, there's like a big path back here. And a big ladder going up there. Is that grenades? That's grenades. Plain old packaging for gardening equipment. That, do that does not concern us. Nothing interactable there. Well, there's that big ladder. So there's door and there's tall ladder. Well, let's try tall ladder. Well, we 
got here. I don't know what we have here. What is this? I can't, uh, observe it. We can look down from above, but I don't don't know what it is. I can't go, can't go that way. Okay, so whatever that's for, I guess it's not for us yet. All right, so that eliminates those, leaving only door. What we got on the map? Steps Garden. All right. Well, there's a left path. The right path is shorter. That probably means we go left, but let's... Oh, it's him. Let's try going right and see what happens. I oh, know we can go through there. Is this where Carnby started the game? It's like a similar area. Alright. So I guess we're turning right. We got, we got dogs. Monster Man is not here, but dogs are. Oh, no, Monster Man is also here. Everyone's here. Every Everyone is here. That's vined up. Can we go in here? We can go in there. Is it helpful to go in here? It looks like we're... We're in a tomb. Here's Archie. Here's Itchard. Well, this was sparkling, but can't interact with it. Is there something we have to put on that? Here's Jeremy. This one doesn't have a name. I mean, there's something on it, but it doesn't have a close-up. We can't see that. What's all this about? I never actually examined this tablet. What's this about? Carved bark tablets bearing engraved Apconis characters. Wonder if this might be used for a puzzle of some kind. Well, I don't think I have anything I can use with this. Which means we're heading on out. Maybe I went the wrong way because I don't think there's like another way out of this area of the map. Yeah, so maybe I need to go back the way we came. gate. Yeah.
we do anything with this? Doesn't seem like it. Well, Monster Man isn't following right now. Okay, we go in the house, or... There's these gates. That's locked. The main entrance of the manor, but I don't want to go back there. Oh, okay. We not we're not going in there, huh? All right. Uh, hmm. Was there a door that we didn't try? Met Eden Shaw. He talks about a door that once opened but let free all of the horrors of the island. He advised me to go to the fort. Help me get out of the manor. Obed's mother gave me the second half of the locket. Found around the neck of the creature I shot in the library. She doesn't believe Obed could be my father. I must find out. Right, yeah. The fort. Hmm. I don't think the volume music volume is doing a weird thing. It's doing a weird thing right now. Um, let me just look at something again. Yeah, to help me get out of the manor, we got the second half of the locket. So it's confirming that we are supposed to use that door to get out of the manor. So once we got out of the manor. Once we went through the door, we got into a room where there was a door, but it was locked. There were stairs going down, but we couldn't go anywhere. It didn't let us go downstairs. A ladder going up, we went up and used our Allen key to get out. Uh, then from there, we were outside. We met Edenshaw. Music, please. So back here, there's, so there's no other door here. There's ladder going down, which is where we came. There's ladder going up. I tried going up there, but there wasn't anything up there. Anything in this bucket? Doesn't seem like it. <clears throat> so we can turn to the, to the right. And go back the way we came with the, where the monster man and the dogs are. But I don't know if... I don't think there was a door? Another door. That we didn't... I thought that we tried all the doors. This one, it's just a straight shot. Like, there's no other door... There's no hallways or doors anywhere besides the one. Right, now the monsters are here. So if I'm looking at this... It looks like we could go str like straight around into a dead end. I haven't been in that dead end, but there's no... It doesn't say there's a door there. I guess we could try it and see what's there. No, I, I did run... I did try to run that way, didn't I? I can actually go... Anywhere. I mean, I guess we're running that way now. Ow. Poor dog. What is back here? Well, there's phosphorus cartridges. I guess that's what's back here. Ow. Ow. Sirs, please. on the ground there. I see something sparkling. <laughs> so 
So we can keep running around. But as I said, there's the door to the mausoleum. But it didn't seem like there was anywhere we could go once we were in the mausoleum. There's a puzzle in there, but I can't seem to interact with the puzzle. What is that? What? What is it? What is what's sparkling? I need to interact with what's sparkling. Oh wait, there's something over there. That's grenades. I think it's grenades. And dead. All right. So, hmm, that's puzzling. Okay, so, it seems like that we were on the right track when we opened the mirror, and it seemed like after opening the mirror and meeting Eden Shaw that there was really only one way that we could go. Like, there were other doors, but the doors were locked. Um, or, like, in the case of the main door for the manor, she just said that she didn't want to go back in. Um. Hmm. Was there any other indication about how to get to the fort? Like, Carnby said something about there was a secret door that led back to the lobby, and I assume that's how he got out. But, uh, we didn't do that. Rather, we used the mirror door to get to the outside. And again, I'm assuming that going to the outside and meeting Edenshaw was the right thing to do, but it didn't seem like there was actually... Um... It didn't seem like either way we could go led to the fort. So I'm a little, I am a little puzzled about that. But being puzzled, being a little puzzled about that is what Alone in the Dark is all about. Um, hmm. All right. Well, we got a little bit more story. We're learning about, the, well, actually a lot more story because we read that lengthy tome about the history of this family and how they got to this island and built this manor and been, do been doing experiments with the creatures of the night and how Jeremy was building a totally badass light gun to kill the creatures and how Eden Shaw is going to be doing his magic ritual to kill to close the gate and how Alan has gone mad and wants to open the gate of darkness. We got a whole bunch of like birth years that were written in red. The and I can only assume I'm going to need those for a puzzle. I wrote them down, but I don't know what I need them for. We met what is probably the dad, who has been turned into a, an immortal monster man. I mean, I can take him out. I can, like, make him take a nap with a few grenades to the chest. But I can't kill him. Can't kill him. Not yet, anyway. There's always some way to kill these guys, but I just don't have the means at the moment. Um... All right, so now just, just the main thing is I'm going to have to work out... Wh where am I supposed to go after getting to the outside? What I am I missing something, possibly? Do I need a key for, like, that gate? Uh, could I have had a key for that gate at this point, or is it something... I don't know. I don't know. But I, I guess that's the next step as we continue on our adventures on Shadow Island. Alone in the dark. In, in Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. The, the poorly audio mixed Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. Will the audio be too quiet or will it be too loud? You're in for a surprise. Maybe both at once.